Welcome to Financial Accounting 2 Tutorial 19C. This is the third in a series of tutorials focused on preparation of the Statement of Cash Flows. This tutorial will look at preparation of the Investing Activities section of the Statement of Cash Flows. There are three learning objectives for this tutorial. The first will be to prepare the Investing section of the Statement of Cash Flows. And in doing that, we will to review the reconstruction of any non-current asset and related contra accounts to identify cash and non-cash transactions. And third, we will review the disposals formula to identify cash proceeds, carrying value, and gains and losses related to long-term assets. This tutorial continues on with the McCoy Limited example. So this requirement here will be to prepare the cash flows from the investing section of the statement of cash flows for the year ended December 31st, 2020. First up in the cash flows from activities section, we have cash from sale of investments. And if you look in the information, this is actually given. Some information is already provided to you in terms of what the cash flows are. So we have cash from sale of fair value net income investments. Okay, and that's what we're looking for, any cash proceeds related to that. Then we have to determine whether or not there was any cash paid for any other investments that were purchased. So really the way to do that and what the whole point of this particular tutorial is, you have to do a reconstruction of the T account for the related account. So what I've done here is I've got a T account for the fair value net income investment. We have a beginning balance of 60,000 an ending balance of 72,000 and those are from the balance sheets and we need one other piece of information we need either the cash purchases to complete the T account or the cost of the asset sold so this 31,000 here is the cost of the investments that were sold and this is given what we can do is through process of reconstructing the T account is determine that the cash proceeds had to be $43,000 now, as it turns out, it actually wasn't totally necessary for the problem to provide the 27,500 cash from sale of investment because if we use our cash proceeds, this formula down here is the disposal formula where if we take our proceeds minus cost, that'll equal our gain or loss. So we can determine the cash proceeds or we can prove we're correct. The cash proceeds were based on $31,000 cost and from the income statement, we know that the loss on the sale of the investments is $3,500. That proves the cash from sale of the fair value net income investments is $27,500. So it does not have to be given, but in this case, it is given. The other thing to note here is that these two items, you can't combine them, must show separately. We can't net them out because a user needs to see Okay, yes, there was cash from the sale of investment and there was cash paid to purchase investments. This is critically important. That's why reconstructing the T account is so necessary. You cannot just take the difference between the beginning and the end balance, right? If you see the end balance is 72 and the beginning is 60, you'd say, oh, okay, change in fair value net income investment is $8,000 can't tell you how many students do that is they put oh, okay cash paid to purchase and in, uh, investments eight thousand dollars no it's more involved than that but it's not complicated as I said here even though that this is given it doesn't have to be so we have a cash proceeds so this is added and then the cash that was paid to purchase additional investments here the forty three thousand is subtracted now we'll look at the next piece that has to do with the cash that's related to the sale and the purchase of any equipment. We have to do a reconstruction of the T accounts that are related to equipment, so the original equipment cost and the accumulated depreciation. Now these two numbers here I've already populated in terms of the cash from sale of equipment and the cash to purchase equipment. Now from the information, this is given, the 10,000, but the $2,000 is unknown and we're gonna show you how to calculate that. We have to reconstruct the T accounts first. So let's look at the equipment. We have a beginning balance of 72,000 and ending balance of 91,000. And given in the data are shares that are exchanged for equipment for 25,000 and then cash purchased for 10,000. 
Always look to see if any assets are acquired in exchange for shares because sometimes students may be misled and if we're given the $16,000 cost here on the right side and when they calculate any balance on the left side that's missing, they think that the missing balance would all be related to cash purchased for equipment. But in actual fact, if we were given the 16,000 and you miss the shares exchanged for 25,000, you would calculate the cash to be 30,000. That wouldn't be right. In order for our T account to work, we must have a credit on the credit side and for it to work at $16,000. So this has to be the cost of the asset sold. And always double check your work in the T account. So 72,000 plus 25,000 plus 10 minus 16,000 is 91,000. So we know that works. Now we have to reconstruct the accumulate depreciation account. We have a beginning balance of 19,000 and ending of 17. And we must also make sure that we include on the credit side any depreciation expense from the income statement. A lot of students miss this because at the end of the year we have uh, an adjustment for depreciation expense. So a debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation. If you miss this, then the number that we're going to calculate here for our T account to work would be wrong. If we have 19,000 and 8,000 and then take off the 17,000 ending, we end up with a $10,000 debit. This had to be the accumulated depreciation on the asset sold, which means that these two together will give us the carrying value of the asset sold. 16,000 minus 10,000 is $6,000 carrying value of the asset sold. So in order to determine this missing $2,000, I have to use the disposals formula, which is my cash proceeds minus the carrying value has to equal a gain or loss. Well, I don't know the cash proceeds. That's the big question mark. So the cash proceeds must be equal to the carrying value plus or minus any gain or loss. That means the cash proceeds had to be $2,000, right? And I could double check and say, well, okay, if my proceeds are $2,000 and my carrying value is $6,000, then that equals a $4,000 loss. And that's what we have here. Cash proceeds is $6,000 carrying value minus a $4,000 loss is $2,000 in proceeds. Double check. 2,000 proceeds minus 6,000 carrying value is a $4,000 loss. And here we have our $2,000 cash from sale of equipment. And again, these must be separate. Next, what we have here are dividends that are received from an associate. To make sure that we've captured this, we have to reconstruct the investment account for the associate. The common theme here is when we're looking at the investing activities section, we have to look at all of the non-current asset accounts and rebuild them, reconstruct them to see what happened. We've got a beginning balance of 76,000, ending of 92. We are given from the income statement, the equity income was 61,250, so we have to add that. Well. If we take 76,000 plus 61,250, that doesn't equal 92,000, which means something happened. There had to be a credit. And if you recall from uh, your previous course in accounting for investments in associates, that any credits coming into the investment and associate account are dividends that are received from them. This is using the equity method and the equity method will increase the investment and associate by the parents, if you want to call it that, or by the investors proportionate share of net income. So that's what the 61,250 is. And then if the associate pays dividends, that comes out of the investment account and is then a debit to cash. That means the dividends received from associate are $45,250. If you miss the reconstruction of this account, you would miss this, and then of course it wouldn't work. And then the last item, if we were to look at all of the non-current asset accounts, would be a trademark. So we have to reconstruct that account as well. If we look at the trademark net, the beginning balance is zero. The ending balance is 18,000. Well, if you look at the difference between the two, that's an $18,000 difference, but don't forget, and that's why the reconstruction is necessary, that we have from the income statement $2,000 in amortization. So we have to make sure that we include that properly. 
In some cases, like some people like to keep a separate T account for accumulated amortization, and then you'd have to reconstruct both accounts. But typically, when it comes to intangible assets, we can take the amortization and net it right against the cost in one account. If we didn't include this $2,000 amortization expense, then we would end up with the wrong amount for the cash purchased. In order for this T account to work, we have a $20,000 debit. We see from the additional information, there's no mention of it being related to an exchange for shares or purchased on a long-term note or anything like that. So therefore, it must be cash. Now, the data gives us this number as well, but it doesn't have to be given. And that's the point of the reconstruction, is that you can actually probably expect the cash purchase amount not to be given, in which case then you would have to do the reconstruction to figure it out. When it's all said and done, the net cash flows from investing activities is $1,750. So now with some key points to remember, when we're dealing with the investing section, we have to look at changes in non-current assets. So your property, plant and equipment, uh, investments, uh, you know, any intangible assets, etc. And when preparing that investing activity section, we cannot just calculate the change from one year to the next. So we're looking at changes, but we cannot just take the beginning minus the ending balance. Otherwise, we'll end up with the wrong amounts. So many students do this, okay? They apply the same approach that they use in the operating activities section for the indirect method and just calculate the change from beginning to ending. You can't do that. You have to reconstruct all the relevant accounts to identify any specific changes in each account because you can have changes resulting from acquisitions and disposals. So you need all relevant accounts. Those account reconstructions can include any original property, plant, and equipment cost and accumulated depreciation accounts. That can also include, of course, any intangibles and accumulated amortization accounts because what we need to do is determine the original cost and any accumulated depreciation of the assets sold, right? So when we had our equipment, we had a $16,000 cost and $10,000 in accumulated depreciation. Neither of those were provided in the problem, so we had to use the information given to reconstruct. This will also help us determine any assets that are acquired for cash, any debt or equity financing, right? So equipment in exchange for shares or you know a trademark from the issue of a note payable or bonds or something. Uh, investment accounts as well, we have to look at if we have any equity accounts like investments, just regular equity investments. If we have amortized cost investments like bonds, any investments in associates, again, to determine the cost of the investment as well as any cash paid to purchase the investments, which we had in this example and then any intangible assets and associated accumulated amortization, again, to determine the original cost and any related accumulated amortization and to see if any assets were acquired for cash or debt or any kind of equity financing. The whole point is reconstructing those accounts. If you don't reconstruct them, you'll never get the investing section correct. If we have multiple transactions in the same account, we cannot net them out. We must disclose them separately. For example, cash received from the sale of equipment and cash paid to purchase equipment have to be separate. They cannot be netted out. The user must know, must see exactly what happened in transactions related to cash. Any non-cash transactions must be disclosed in a note to the statement of cash flow. So for example, equipment acquired in exchange for any long-term debt, any bonds or shares must be disclosed in a note. And don't forget the disposals formula. Built into this is having to use that disposals formula to determine the cash proceeds sometimes, or to determine the gain or loss if it's not provided in an income statement. Or if we know the cash proceeds and we know the gain or loss, we may need to figure out the carrying value of an asset. And if we know the carrying value and the accumulated depreciation, we can figure out the cost. And if we know the cost, then we can perhaps determine if there is any asset that was acquired in exchange for shares, if we happen to know the cash piece. So that concludes tutorial 19C. You may want to refer to tutorials 19A and B for the preparation of the operating activity section using the indirect and direct methods respectively.
And now you can go on to tutorial D for the statement uh, of cash flows financing activity section.